And joining us now as we take a look at the weather forecast here, what did we see over the weekend as far as rain and what's it looking like here as we work through our July 4th holiday and get into the month of July. Joining us here, taking a little time out of his uh, his vacation in the Northwoods uh, up in Wisconsin, Eric Stodgrass with Nutria joining us today. Eric, always good to catch up with you, my friend, and uh, thanks for a few minutes of time here uh, during your, your vacation and yeah, I was thinking about the weather right now as we look at 4th of July. I got to back up a couple of days. We saw some pretty good rains uh, here the last, I'd say, three to five days across some dry areas of the Corn Belt, Eric. Yeah, I had a number of farmers uh, ask me to, to every time they get into drought to leave because the moment I left the Midwest is when it finally started to rain in certain places. So, <laughs> but uh, as you know, it, it, you know, it came through as uh, some pretty nasty storms starting all the way yeah. back to last Thursday and Friday. And, and as it uh, ripped through there, we, uh, in fact, I was just looking this up this morning, we're approaching 3,800 reports of severe weather damage. Uh, in the last nine days. And uh, of course, that was capped off by a large derecho that hit uh, parts of Missouri, Iowa, ripped through Illinois, Indiana, and finished in Kentucky and Tennessee. And we're still seeing what the damage looks like in that particular event. Uh, I've seen a lot of reports of, of course, corn that's been laid flat and a lot of damage to infrastructure. So this is going to be one that you know, we're going to go back and look on uh, historically as being a more significant event happening right before we pollinate a crop. So this is a uh, this was critical rain and, and critical severe weather. Definitely. And uh, our thoughts are with folks who uh, were impacted by that derecho and all the severe weather that did happen. I know it was uh, definitely not fun for some folks. You mentioned that critical rain, though, and I just uh, pulled up one of the uh, latest maps of the recent rainfall on our video feed from uh, your Nutrien uh, website, ag-wx.com. And you can just see uh, on the map some of those key areas, southern Iowa, northern Missouri, into central Illinois, Indiana, really saw some good rains here over the last 72 hours. They have. In fact, I was talking with a friend this morning in west central Illinois, which is one of our driest climate reporting districts in the country throughout June. And uh, they picked up four inches of rain. And I was talking to him. I said, well, what's it look like now? He says, you know, it's soaked in. There's no there's no standing water. That That water got used by the crop. But, you know, take a look at that map and you see, look at Minnesota, look at Wisconsin. There is actually a big chunk of Wisconsin, which produces a lot of corn and beans and other crops that's missed out on this. And so there's still some areas that are hurting. There are pockets in southern Missouri that are still hurting. But, hey, rains did hit big key areas in, in Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, northern Missouri, and so much of Illinois, Indiana, and Kentucky that uh, these these rains will, in the long range, be seen as favorable once we kind of get things cleaned up from the severe weather that accompanied them. So how much time do we buy, Jesse? I, I'd say this bought us quite a bit of time through pollination in certain areas, and it's not done yet. So there's still more severe weather, more uh, heavy rain that's on the way for the Midwestern United States as this big front dives in out of Canada. And that's actually going to drop these temperatures uh, way down. Uh, you can see me. I'm sitting in the sweatshirt here in the North Woods. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're, we're expecting to get some really cold air that's going to dip through here uh, in the coming days. So there's more rain on the way and it's going to buy us some time. And, and that's good because we need to buy as much time as possible. Well, more rain, cooler temperatures, definitely going to buy us some time. You know, one interesting thing I want to ask you about as well, we've seen some of this recent rainfall and we haven't talked about the water levels on the Mississippi River in quite a while. How are things looking there, Eric? Yeah, I feel like that kind of snuck up on me this past month. And what I mean is I was watching so much, again, about the drought and what it was doing to the crop. And I was forgetting about other major parts of, of, of the agricultural industry in the Midwest. And that is what that big river and its tributaries are doing. So we saw after flooding in spring, we went back down to almost five feet below low stage about a week ago on the Mississippi River at Memphis. Some of the recent rain did get into the river, turned it back up a little bit, a few feet. But uh, it's still well below where we want it to be this time of year. And uh, remember, any heavy rains that come into the crop this time of year, the crop keeps it. It's, it stays there. It stays local. It's hard to get that to drain into the big river system. Some of it does, but it's hard to get it to really just drain into the river system. So we need to see better moisture for both the crop's sake and the river's sake over the next 60 days in order to not have to worry about what the river could look like come fall again. Because we all remember what happened last fall 
We are, I was excited about the rapid harvest progress and forgot to realize that the river was getting so very low. And that had major, major problems on getting grain out and fertilizer back up uh, once we got into that November, December timeframe. So keep an eye on it. It's still below low stage, especially down there in Memphis, where I tend to kind of keep a focal point on. Uh, so more water is needed to get in that river system before we, uh, you know, we get toward those critical time of year where we need the water there. Definitely. Eric, as we think about longer term as well, I know you've been watching some of the latest uh, long range forecasts from the CPC. Can you catch us up on some of that information as well? Yeah, CPC on Friday, because it was the last Friday at the end of a month. So they always do this. They updated their one month, their week three, week four. They updated all their hazards maps, including their drought maps. And uh, they, they predict improvement for the Midwest on droughts. They predict cooler weather throughout most of July in the heart of the Corn Belt. They also predict weather weather. But I, I just want to, you know, I hate doing this, but I'm going to toss out a what if, okay? We have not yet fully resolved some of the issues that put us into drier conditions back in, in May and June. There's still cold water off the West Coast of North America. Um, I am not convinced that we keep the entire month of July cooler and wetter. Certainly in the near term, yes. But uh, I'm worried about maybe after July 21st, 22nd. I'm starting to see some signals out there that could suggest a drier, warmer stretch at the end of the month. And so now that while that'll get us past most of pollination, we're going to start talking about grain fill. And, and should there be some issues in, in August, you know, wh while it's not a super high probability right now, I can't ignore the fact that we're starting to see some signals and it's beginning to show up in the ECMWF longer range forecast too. So let's, uh, let's take it day by day, but just understand there is some risk there in the longer term of, of some drier conditions returning. Well, definitely some things to consider longer term. Eric, as always, we appreciate the time. And I know folks could stay up to date. You have the weekly newsletter and then as well online ag-wx.com where people can check out the latest maps and, and much more. So I know you guys have a lot of great information you're putting out there from Nutrient, don't you, Eric? Yeah, it's one of my favorite things to do is to build all that stuff and to get it out there in front of folks and, and, and let, let people see it. I mean, it's just kind of a, it's kind of a fun thing to do to make, I think I'm making somewhere in the neighborhood of five or 6,000 maps a day right now. And Hey, if people like to look at maps of weather. I will make them and, and you can go look at them. <laughs> Well, we appreciate all the work you do and getting to look at those maps and you taking the time to join us. Thanks so much. Enjoy uh, the rest of your vacation and have a happy 4th of July, Eric. We'll talk to you again next week. Yeah, same to you, Jesse. Thanks.